I just want to get your thoughts on um, that announcement yesterday, uh, the AstraZeneca stuff, uh, or the company mm -hmm. that we'll be working, working towards. Does that buoy the markets? It has. I, I think you probably need to ask the question about who's going to just do it. And, and what I mean by that, obviously, we yeah. all know that the only major company in this country that can do that is CSL. And I'm, I'm going to put my hand up and disclose my, I have interest in it, in that I actually have a shareholder, but also I personally believe that CSL is probably the best company that Australia's ever produced. It is a high-end manufacturer. It has high intellectual property. It is a global leader with global spread manufacturing across the globe. It's turned its products from being a small handful into an absolute plethora. It is an incredible company. But listening to that deal, yeah. and look, I, I understand the politics behind saying it's obviously uh, it's a letter of intent. It's not obviously, therefore, technically, inverted commas, a priced in fully factored deal. I think in this market, it's probably the correct thing to do because as the Prime Minister and pretty much CSL, it's the one I listen to, have pointed out it's not the only option. Yeah. It's not the only one to go by. CSL very much still are banking on the University of Queensland's uh, project. And the reason for that is that it's an easier manufacturer and there's a belief that it could actually be a stronger immunal response. The catch with the Queensland University one is that it's only in stage one trials, which mean at mm. best it would be produced by June next year, more likely probably December next year because of the time, yeah. whereas Oxford is in stage three and, and it could actually be done and dusted by the end of the year and manufactured by the start of next year. So, look, I, I, what CSL is telling us is clear. They will manufacture it. They will, you know, go into a deal with AstraZeneca to get them the ability to actually upscale themselves and clearly cost is no option. Mm. I think that also needs to be pointed out. There, there is... It is going to cost billions, but in terms of what this actually means for the economy, in terms of being able to open up again, obviously yeah. those billions will become quite small yeah. in, in terms of what it means. Got to do it. Hey, uh, reporting yes. season rolls on. Qantas, the big one today. Uh, obviously been in the headlines a lot over the mm. past few months. What are we expecting here? It's not going to be great, obviously. Uh, no, it's not. And not only that, what's expected is... Actually, at the moment, a lot of people are sort of almost pulling numbers out of a hat. It will probably be the biggest reversal in Qantas numbers since the GFC. There are some that are expecting it to be the biggest reversal in Qantas numbers in its history. Uh, through no fault of its own, let's let's clearly point that yeah. out. It is going to make a loss today. The, the question that everybody's asking is, is their management now? What I mean by that is how are they going to particularly manage their fleet? Uh, their international fleet is basically, as we know, it's not just grounded, it, it's it's gathering dust in, mm. in in the central of Australia. The, the huge amount of the A380s are sitting in Alice Springs along with their A330s as well. And so the US as well. It, exactly right. Mm. So it's it's about management. The other question that will come from the market is, is about their capital. And look, they've done some raisings. They were very well bid up when they did that in June. So it, it's just about making sure that Qantas shows that it's controlling its balance sheet through what is going to be probably its toughest period, even more tough than when we had 9-11 uh, and what happened there. That was one of the biggest shakeouts in aviation in its history. So that that's probably what we're going to hear today. It's not going to be about the numbers. It's about management yeah. and managing through the crisis. Well, they've got the right the, the man behind it. Uh, that's going to give investors a lot of confidence when it comes to those who, who are who firmly back Qantas anyway, with Alan mm -hmm. Joyce, uh, who steered them through crises before. Uh, Evan, yes. uh, what about this news out of uh, the US overnight? Uh, Apple, it's now a $2 trillion company, only two years after it became a $1 trillion company. So moving yeah. at warp speed, it would seem. Warp speed? I think that's probably a very good word to use in terms of, <laughs> of what it is. Uh, look, the other thing I'd probably expand, obviously, on is there's a question that everybody's asking now is the recovery in the US has been the fastest it's ever had. So after a, what is actually seen as the fastest bull market it's ever had, it's had the fastest, uh, sorry, bear market it's ever had, it's had the fastest bull market recovery it's ever had. Yes, Apple is part of that, but I'd actually probably expand it to the other four, which is Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and also to some extent Facebook. The reason I say that, people are asking the question is how sustainable is this? How long can it go, et cetera, et cetera. What COVID has taught us is that we are now moving faster and faster and faster towards the digital world. We were already doing that for the last probably three decades even, and it would be the argument in terms of how long we've been moving towards the digital world. COVID, though, has accelerated that at warp speed, mm. and, and that's what your word. So we went from being 20% consumers online to 26 um, in, from February to now. It took us tw almost 30 years to get to 20% of the market, and then we've gone up six basis points inside, what, five and a half, six months that COVID's been going on. It shows you the speed of it. Mm. The, the reason I argue that is that the difference between everything else in a Facebook or Google and Amazon, et cetera, is that there is only one way to do a search engine, and that is Google, and that's for the planet. 
there's only one way to really social media wise, and that is Facebook. And there's only one way to do international transport going forward, and that's Amazon. And Apple, to some extent, is that is that uh, sort of that part of it as well. So the the expansion is still there for those companies because they're not just you know confined to America, or it's not just confined to Australia. They are the planet, um, and that's why there is this argument, even though with what's going on right now is mind-bogglingly fast and is making them look quite expensive. Mm. If you look at the forward expectations. They have the planet as their market, and there's every reason they can get bigger still. Yeah, not, not bad having the planet as your market. Uh, going great guns, just like Iron Ore is here as well. But, uh, Evan, we're out of time, unfortunately. We'll, we'll talk to you again soon, though. It's a good wrap of things.